You did find a key. On Eddie Kane's key ring, huh? Well, you should be very happy, Lieutenant. When now? Tonight. May I ask why then? Yes, of course, I'll come right away. novel, Lieutenant, or just boning up on the touch system? I want to tell you something. This writing is not as easy as it looks. You know, uh, I was on a case once. A candidate for United States Senate, he had a lot of security men around him because there had been threats against his life. Now, in order to shake the security men, he changed his clothes with his campaign manager. Then he shoots the campaign manager, and he makes it look like an attempt on his life. Now, that's a heck of a story. There's only one problem. I was talking to my wife. I got it all up here. I can't put it down here. Lieutenant, very frankly, I don't give a damn about your senator or your story. Now, look, I've got people coming over to my house tonight. Just exactly what is your problem? Well, forgive me, sir. I didn't know you were expecting guests. Did I tell you that the key that was on the floor next to the body didn't fit the lock? Yes, you mentioned it the other day. You said that you, there had to be another key to fit the new lock, and when you had that key, then you'd have the person who murdered Alan Mallory. Right. Right. I knew I only told one person. I wasn't sure who. But it was you. Yes, it was me. And now you just tell me on the telephone you found that other key. It was on Eddie Kane. Right, we found it. Here it is. But there's a problem. Well, what's the problem? Doesn't the key fit the lock? No, it fits. Key fits. It's like a glove. Well, all right, there's your answer. Then obviously that's the key that Eddie Kane used the night he came in here. Now, that would be impossible. Why? Officer, would you bring in Mr. Black? Just wouldn't be possible. Now, look, forgive me for, for seeming dumb about this thing, but I just don't understand you. I've just shown me a key that fits that lock. Right. Right, sir. It does fit. Uh, good evening, Mr. Black. But, uh, that lock wasn't on the door that night. Oh, Mr. Black, Mr. Greenleaf. Yeah, how do you do? How do you do? Mr. Black is a locksmith. Right. Mr. Black, would you tell Mr. Greenleaf when you put this lock on this door? Oh, uh, that, that was Thursday. That was the day after that writer, Mr. Mallory, was shot. The day after? Well, I don't understand that. Who ordered you to change the lock? He did. Yes, sir, I did. Which raises a very troublesome question. That'll be all, Mr. Boyd. See, for the life of me, I cannot figure out how Eddie Kane would have a key to a lock that was put on the door on my instructions the day after he shot Mallory. Does that make any sense to you? No, not at all. Why would Kane even come back here? Sure is a puzzle, all right. You don't have any answers. No, not a one. Beats me. Well, thank goodness I uh, got the answer to the other thing that was bothering me. What other thing? Well, sir, I know you're expecting guests, so I don't want to hold you up anymore. Well, look, it's true. I do have to leave, and I haven't got much time, but I am curious. Now what? As long as you're curious, sir. I figured out how Eddie King got in here that night. Uh, he didn't use the key that was removed from your car. Mallory had changed that lock, and obviously he didn't use this key. The fact is, he didn't use any key. Well, how'd he get in here, then? He walked. The door was open. 
Well, the door was open. Yes, sir. You see, the air conditioner had broken down. That's why that window was open. You can actually hear the street noises on the tape. But you know, an open window on a muggy night is not much help. So I think Mr. Mallory must have opened that door. That created a nice cross breeze here. Now, when Mr. Kane arrived, while well, the door was open, he just walked in. Mr. Mallory must have turned around and he shot him. All right. If that is true, and it sounds conceivable enough to me, but I don't see how that changes anything. About what, sir? About what happened. Now, look, Columbo, I have had you up to here. And frankly, I'm not interested in locks and keys and open doors and air conditioners and how he got in here. What the hell difference does it make how he got in here? The fact is that some crackpot war veteran came in here, shot and killed Alan Mallory, and then frames me out of some insane belief that Alan and I stole his lousy little story. Now, that's all I know. And that's all I'm interested in. Mr. Walbert? I thought that name might mean something. Let's see if we're talking about the same Mr. Walbert. We know you two fellas know one another, so don't bother to hide it. No, you're wrong. We don't know each other. Now, this young man may have seen me going to Alan. That's a lie. I resent that. Mr. Greenleaf, you told me that you knew nothing about the contents of Mr. Mallory's new novel. That's right, I don't. That's another lie. Thank you, officer. Good evening, Norman. Good evening. Met this young man the night of the murder. Works for a manuscript service. Picks up Mr. Mallory's tapes, takes them to his company's office. The next day, the typist transcribes the tapes. Then he returns the tapes and the type pages, except for the extra copy, which he passed to you. Now, that's nothing but assumption. It's pure speculation. I've checked your bank accounts. You made five monthly cash deposits of $1,000 each. Now, a court might want to know where you got that money on your salary. Now, you look at me. You don't have to say anything. I'm not talking about losing your job. I'm talking about murder. Don't you say a word. I'll call my lawyer. He's involving you in a murder. Was that part of the deal? Look, um, I did get a set of the pages to Mr. Greenleaf. But I'm not involved in any murder. I don't know a thing about a murder. I believe you. Go on home now. We'll get your statement later. Thank you. Go on. All right, Colombo. So he testifies that he gave me those papers. What's that mean? It means he knew everything that Mallory was writing, day by day, including the ending. And even if I knew the ending, that still doesn't mean that I was the one who murdered the man. For $100,000, you don't kill off Rock Hudson. In this synopsis, which you gave me, which you claim Eddie Kane wrote nine months ago, the hero saves his men, he goes off to live in a monastery. I hate to tell you this, sir, but there is no way that Eddie Kane could have had that idea. It wasn't even Alan Mallory's. It was given to him by his agent, Miss McRae. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out how Eddie Kane could have written an ending nine months ago that was only invented last week. I guess you see my point. Mm -hmm.